Hello, so today we begin the discussion of matrix algorithms. We will start with matrix multiplication and then we will give some algorithms for uh, inversion and uh, decomposition. Now, first thing I would like to show that suppose we have a matrix of size n cross n, say this is matrix A and we would like to multiply this to another matrix of the same size then indeed the result is also of the same size. Now, often it turns out that it is easier to design algorithms when n is a power of 2. Now, in that case, suppose we embed such a matrix in a larger matrix. Say, we have some size 2 power k greater than or equal to n. This is an n cross n matrix A and this is another square matrix of size 2 power k minus n by 2 power k minus n. And we put a unit matrix here, we put all zeros here and we do the same with the other matrix. Then the result will be again the unit matrix. So, maybe I will show that by ones and this will be the product of the two matrices A and D. So, what we notice is that we can embed a smaller, smaller matrix in a larger one by putting identity matrix in the orthogonal dimensions, the other dimensions than those involved in A. Then those end up giving us one the unit matrix into unit matrix as unit matrix and the result of A and B comes here. Hence, one can always extract the result of A times B from this part. Hence, there is no disadvantage in assuming that this is A power of 2 dimension. Indeed, of course, the cost can go up because this is a higher dimension. But one thing you may want to notice is that this dimension, this power of 2 has to be between n and 2 n. And so, at most the size can double, but not more than that. Now, we will describe. Now, in fact, first thing we know is that the, the normal long hand algorithm for multiplying two matrices takes the n, uh, the n component vector the row vector and takes the n component column vector, takes their dot product and puts here and so on. So, what we have here is that each of the component of the product results by computing the dot product of two vectors of size n. Each uh, uh, computation requires n operations n multiplications, n minus 1 additions. So, which is an order n task. Hence, the entire matrix takes n square into order n. Therefore, order n cube algorithm is right away known to us. I am going to describe a slightly efficient algorithm due to Strassen. Strassen's algorithm by a skillful manipulation of these structures. 
from now onwards I am going to assume my n is 2 power k, because one can always perform this manipulation and assume this is your n. So, suppose we have two matrices, which are of size n by n. If I split them into four half size matrices, I am going to call them A 1 1, A 1 2, A 2 1 and A 2 2 and I am going to multiply this with matrix B this is also split into sub matrices B 1 1, B 1 2, B 2 1 and B 2 2. Now, let us define certain now in fact, let us just express the product of these two in terms of sub matrices. So, A dot B, well this block multiplies to this block and gives you A 1 1, B 1 1 plus A 1 2, B 2 1, 1 2, B 2 1. this block will be a 1 1 b 1 2 plus a 1 2 b 2 2. These will be a 2 1 b 1 1 plus a 2 2 b 2 1 and this is a 2 1 b 1 2 plus a 2 2 b 2 2. Now, as such this involves 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 matrix multiplications of size n by 2 by n by 2 and one can hence express the total cost of multiplying to 2 to the power k matrices. This denotes the log of n. So, 2 power k by 2 power k matrices. It involves 8 multiplications of half size. In addition to that, we are going to perform certain summations and the total number of summations will be n by 2 square uh, 4 of them. So, we have 4 n by 2 square. Uh, Let us say we put a constant here c times this and one can solve this recurrence relation and you can easily see that this turns out to be order n cube. And hence, we gain nothing by just taking this approach. This is a divided conquer approach, but does not lead us to any better result than what we already have. So, Strassen proposes a trick by which he reduces the total cost, and that is the trick that we have to now look at. What we do is we define the following matrices as A f minus h p 2 A plus b times h p 3 d minus e plus g p 4 is c plus d 
time c. In addition to that, we also define three more matrices P 5 is A plus D into E plus H. This is P 6 is B minus D and G plus H and P 7 minus A plus C and this is E plus F. So, let us consider these seven matrices. Yeah. Okay. Since I have changed uh, the names, I will correct them. These are A, B, C, D and these are E F G H. Okay. Then it is a matter of just simple verification. One can show that A one one. Okay, so now these are. Uh, now I have to modify them. So that becomes A E plus B G A F plus B H. C E plus D G and this is C F plus D H. So, now we can express these matrices in terms of P in the following fashion. We can verify that A E plus B G is P 3 plus P 5 plus P 6 minus P 2 A F plus B H is P 1 plus P 2 C E plus D G that is this matrix is P 3 plus P 4 and lastly C F plus D H is P 1 plus P 5 plus P 7 minus P 4. Now, what you have to observe is that these are all n by 2 by n by 2 matrices a as well as f minus h a plus b h all of these are of size n by 2 cross n by 2 and what we have done here is we have computed seven products and from that we can extract all the four sub matrices of the product this is our a times b this is unlike the direct approach when we had computed uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 products. This is the essence of the Strassen's algorithm and that leads to the saving which is 
we see here turning out to be n to the power log 7. So, let us just write down the recurrence relation T k, T k is the product of 2 n cross n matrices, k is log of n. This involves multiplication of 7 matrices of half the size. In addition, we have added several half size matrices and those include 1 here, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 additions of matrices of half the size. So, that involves 18 into each addition is n by 2 square size. So, that is 2 to the power 2 k over 4 that many. So, again I will just put some constant here these many operations we perform of additions and we end up with our matrix. Now, at the base case, what is going to happen in the base case, when we break up a 2 cross 2 matrix, we are going to generate 1 cross 1 matrices. And the cost of multiplying a matrices of uh, my mistake, it should be 0 that is of dimension 1 cross 1 should be because we are writing log here. This will be 1 or a constant order 1 constant a constant here. So, let us just solve this equation. This gives me T k equal to some constant times 18 times 2 power 2 k by 4 next time you will have 7 occurrences. So, 7 of these with half the or 1 fourth the size because we are squaring it. So, we will have 1 plus 7 over 4 plus 7 over 4 square plus 7 over 4 k minus 1. At the end, we will have only 1 cross 1 size matrices and they will be in all how many. So, we will have 7 of this 7 square of t k minus 2, 7 cube of t k minus 3. So, at the end we will have 7 to the power k of t 1, but t 1 I can just write down as another constant say d. I could simply say this as d. You add this turns out to be 7 some constant this is less than equal to 7 to the power k, which is equal to 2 to the power log of 7 into k is log of n which is 2 to the power log of n times log of 7 which is n to the power log 7 again constant here which is order n to the power 2 point
8075, which is again over an or n cube algorithm. Now, we are going to discuss uh, how to compute the inverse of a matrix. So, let us suppose we have a matrix A, which is of size n cross n. Now, you know that you cannot compute the inverse of a matrix unless it is non singular. Now, at this stage, we are not going to compute a um, we are going to give a exact algorithm, but we are performing certain symbolic computations. So, what we are going to do is we assume that A, which is assuming that n is of course, a power of 2, we can break it this into two parts, into four parts A 1 1, A 1 2, A 2 1, and A 2 2. Let us suppose this matrix is invertible and let us say A inverse is a matrix which also can be split into four parts and this is B 1 1, B 1 2, B 2 1 and B 2 2. Well, by definition their product should be the identity matrix. So, let us write down their product and we are going to get A 1 1, B 1 1 plus A 1 2, B 2 1, A 1 1, B 1 2 plus A 1 2, B 2 2. A 2 1 plus A 2 2 2 1 A 2 1 B 1 2 plus A 2 2 B 2 2. This would be the product which should be should be equal to the identity matrix, which I can also view in the split form. So, this will be an n by 2 cross n by 2 identity matrix, this will be also an identity matrix, this will be 0 matrix, so will be this one. So, now we can equate this to identity matrix, this to identity matrix and these two to 0 to get the four equations as follows. We have A 1 1, B 1 1 plus A 1 2 B 2 1 equal to 1. This one stands for a unit matrix of size n by 2 cross n by 2. Then we have A 1 1 B 1 2 plus A 1 2 B 2 2. This should be the 0 matrix, the matrix with all 0 in entries in size n by 2 cross n by 2. A 2 1 B 1 1 plus A 2 2 B 2 1 is 0. Finally, A 2 1 B 1 2 plus 2 2 B 2 2 is 1. Now, we would like to simplify them, but for that I need to make one assumption. Let me assume that matrix A 1 1 itself is invertible. Please note that such a thing need not in general be true. The matrix A may be invertible that does not imply this matrix is itself non singular. But let us assume, assume that 
A11 inverse exists. We will now solve uh, from this equation, we will get an expression for B. So, let me just label them as 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, from 2, we have A 1, 2 equal to sorry B 1, 2 equal to minus A 1, 1 inverse A 1, 2 B 2, 2. What I have done is I have taken this product on the other side and becomes minus a 1 2 times b 2 2 and then multiplied by a 1 1 inverse from the left side. So, that cancels out leaves b 1 2 on the left hand side and we get minus a 1 1 inverse a 1 2 b 2 2. And then let me plug in b 1 2 in 4 plug in equation 4, you are going to get uh, minus A 1 1 inverse A 1 2 B 2 2 B uh, sorry. So, that would be minus this was B 1 2 so minus A 2 1 followed by this expression and then we have plus A 2 2 B 2 2 equal to 1. Okay. So, let us rewrite this as a 2 2 minus A 2 1 A 1 1 inverse A 1 2 B 2 2 equal to 1. Now, let me define a matrix D. This denotes I am defining D to be A 2 2 minus A 2 1 A 1 1 inverse A 1 2. Now, let me make sure I am doing ok. Yes. In that case, so this equation is simply D times B 2 2 equal to 1. Now, let me make one more assumption. Further assume that D inverse exists. Once again, such a thing need not be in general true, but suppose it does exist. Then, B 2 2 is D inverse that is simply multiply by D inverse from left on, le on both sides to get this. Now, we can plug in the value of B 2 2. Well, let me see. we have B, uh, B 1, 2, we also have B 2, 2 and we still have to find out B 2, 1 and B 1, 1. Okay. So, let us take the first 
equation now from 1 I have b 1 1 notice that a 1 1 inverse exists. So, I can multiply this a 1 1 inverse from left and that is going to give me a 1 1 inverse 1 minus a 1 2 b 2 1 a 1 1 is now expressed sorry b 1 1 is expressed in terms of a 1 1 inverse a 1 2 and b 2 1. Let us plug this uh, b 1 1 into equation 3. So, plug it plug in equation 3 and that leads to a 2 1 for b 1 1 I can write down a 1 1 inverse 1 minus a 1 2 b 2 1 followed by a 2 2 b 2 1. This is the consequence of plugging in the value of b 1 1 in equation 3. Okay. Now, we have b 2 1 in both of these, we need to get an expression for b 2 1. So, let us collect them together, I am going to get a 2 1 a 1 1 inverse plus a 2 2. So, the next term is this times this and this. So, I am first writing down uh, this one minus a 2 1 a 1 1 inverse a 1 2 times b 2 1 equal to 0. Now, this we have defined to be d, d is a 2 2 minus a 2 1 a 1 1 inverse a 1 2. So, we have a compact expression a 2 1 a 1 1 inverse plus d b 2 1 equal to 0. And since d inverse exists from our assumption, Staying with our assumption, we can get b 2 1 as minus d inverse a 2 1 a 1 1 inverse. All right. So, let us put the whole thing together and we get a inverse matrix as Okay, maybe I can put down this as a as a lemma. If a 1 1 inverse and d inverse which is same as a 2 2 minus a 2 1 a 1 1 inverse a 1 2 inverse exists. then inverse of a inverse of a is if you recall was b 1 1 b 1 2 b 2 1 b 2 2 becomes the following b 1 1 is a 1 1 inverse 1 minus a 1 2 now, I need to plug in b 2 1 in that, which we know is this. So, that minus sign will become a plus sign d inverse a 2 1 a 1 1 inverse. 
a 1 2 d inverse a 2 1 1 1 inverse b 2 b 1 2 b 1 2 was uh, where do we have b 1 2 b 1 2 is this which is minus a 1 1 inverse a 1 2 b 2 2, but b 2 2 is d inverse. Okay. Then b 2 1, b 2 1 is minus d inverse a 2 1 a 1 1 inverse and this is d inverse. So, we get a, a reduced form, a recursive form, where what we are doing is, we are getting an inverse of an n cross n matrix in terms of inverse of smaller matrices. But this expression may not be useful in case any one of these fail to have inverses. If A 1 1 or D do not have inverse, such a reduction is of not much help. Although this expression is not going to lead to an, a, a, an algorithm to compute A inverse for general case, but I am going to discuss a special case, where we can compute the inverse. And that is, for a triangular matrix. So, suppose A is a triangular matrix. What triangular means is that, if you happen to have a matrix in which all the elements of the diagonal and above may be non-zero but all the elements below the diagonal are 0. So, this may be non-zero and these may be non-zero, but these are all 0. Then we call this an upper triangular matrix. Similarly, if the matrix has 0 above the diagonal and these may be non-zero, then we call it lower triangular matrix. Now, one interesting thing about triangular matrices is that their determinant is very easy to, de to compute. The only contribution among n factorial terms in the determinant, which will definitely, all the others are going to be 0, because they will contain this, the, one of the zeros from here. The only term which will not contain any of these zeros will be the product of the diagonal term. So, the determinant of A, where A is a triangular matrix, upper or lower, is nothing but A 1 1 times A 1, uh, A 2 2, all the way to A n n. Now, if I am interested in computing the inverse of such a matrix, I want the determinant to be non-zero. Hence, it implies that all these diagonal elements should be non-zero. Okay. So, one observation we make is that if A is triangular, triangular non-singular matrix, then all its diagonal elements must be non-zero. Okay. Now, I 
I am going to assume my A is an upper triangular matrix and then we will try to devise an algorithm to compute such inverse. So, an algorithm I will go to compute A inverse for an upper triangular Now, I am going to use our expression that we have deduced and for that I need to split my matrix into half sizes. So, our A is A 1 1, A 1 2, A 2 1, A 2 2. So, what we immediately notice is that these entries are all 0. So, A 2 1 is 0. The other two observations are that this itself is an upper triangular matrix A 1 1 and so is this A 2 2 are upper triangular matrices. Of course, of n by 2 by n by 2 size. Now, let us try to write down the value of D, because this is one of the matrices we are going to invert. D is A 2 2 minus A 2 1 and so on, which is 0. So, this just reduces to A 2 2. Now, notice that to apply that result, we need A 1 1 and D invertible. Now, what do we notice here is that A 1 1 is this matrix, this is itself an upper triangular matrix. Since all the diagonal elements of the big matrix are non zero, so all the diagonal element of this matrix are non zero and so are for this matrix. Hence, A 1 1 must be invertible, because its determinant is non 0, A 2 2 must be invertible. So, we make an observation here that if A is invertible, then so are a 1 1 and D, which is same as A 2 2. We have just seen that. Now, this immediately gives us a recursive algorithm. Now, base case is that our matrix A is a 1 cross 1 size matrix. A 1 cross 1 size matrix has only one element that belongs to the diagonal. So, that can be non 0. Now, if this is invertible, then that has to be non 0. So, my matrix A looks like A and this is not equal to 0. So, we can immediately produce the inverse which is 1 over A. Notice that the product is nothing but A times 1 over A which is 1. So, base case is trivial, it takes constant time to compute the inverse. Now, for the general case for k greater than 0, A inverse matrix looks like A 1 1 inverse one plus A 1 2, our D is A 2 2 inverse, A 2 1 is 0. So, that goes away and this term just vanishes completely. So, you are left with sir, just A 1 1 inverse here. This 
this expression is minus a 1 1 inverse a 1 2 a 2 2 inverse because d is a 2 2. This is a 2 2 inverse and notice here again we have a 2 1. So, this vanishes and we get this expression. Now, this involves computation of two inverses of half size upper triangular matrices. So, one can recursively apply the same algorithm. So, that is the end of the discussion of the algorithm. Now, let us take a look at the cost of computation. To compute the inverse of a triangular matrix of size 2 power k by 2 power k, I am supposed to compute two inverses of half size. So, 2 t k minus 1, one of this and the other a 2 2 inverse. In addition, I have to perform two multiplications of half size, which I am going to denote by 2 m k minus 1. Please note, m k minus 1 denotes the cost of multiplying two, 2 power k minus 1 by 2 power k minus 1 matrices. We will say multiply these two and I will take the result and multiply that with this matrix. So, two of them. This is the recurrence relation we have to solve. I am not going to worry about what is exact value of this. This could be done by using Strassen's algorithm, but there are better algorithms than Strassen's algorithm as well. So, we will just leave this as a black box and express this uh, as m k minus 1. Now, let us just solve this. So, this turns out to be 2 m k minus 1 plus 2 square m k minus 2, 2 power k minus 1 m, uh, it will be probably k m 0 this is the expansion of this recurrence relation. Now, although I am not committing on the value of this, one thing I do know is that this will take at most 2 to the power k minus 1 cube, that is our simplest algorithm. We have already seen a better one, but this can never take less than 2 to the power k minus 1 square, because there are 2 to the power k minus 1 square entries in this matrix. So, even just if somebody gives you those entries just to output them will take that much time. So, we will say that m k will be somewhere around 2 to the power k 2 plus epsilon. I can assume that for some epsilon, m k is 2 power k power 2 plus epsilon and epsilon is for somewhere between, uh, it can be 0 we know it is not also going to be 1, but somewhere between. So, m k minus 1 is 2 power k minus 1 into 2 plus epsilon, which is 2 power k 2 plus epsilon over 2 power 2 plus epsilon. So, that I can say is m k divided by 
2 power 2 plus epsilon. This is a this this is valid if we assume that this is equal to this. Hence, we can further say that 2 m k minus 1 is less than equal to m k. The reason is, if I, if I take 2 out and multiply here, I still have 2 to the power 1 plus epsilon here. Hence, m k is greater than that factor. So, we can use this inequality between m k and m k minus 1. If I use that, then this can be written as 2 Uh, can be written as m k. Notice that 2 m k minus 1 is less than equal to m k plus this would be again m ok. So, I should say this is uh, Okay. Uh, this is still because this will be 2 power 1 plus epsilon. So, I will like to keep that way, I will like to keep that as m k by 2 and this is m k by 2, this is m k by 2 square. When I absorb these 2 square, I will get m k by 2 square and k by 2 cube and that is less than equal to m k. The sum of this geometric series is less than equal to 1 half by 1 minus 1 half it is no more than 1. So, this times 1. So, what we conclude is that T of k is of the order of m of k. It does not cost you more than just the cost of multiplying two matrices of the same size. But of course, remember this is only for inverting a triangular matrix. Now, how to compute the inverse of a general matrix? For that, in the next lecture, we will discuss first how to break up a matrix into triangular matrices, so that you can then compute the inverse. Okay.